Hey everybody, this is Leah with Prevailing Word. Hey, um, I just wanted to make sure that, first off, to let you guys know how much we love and appreciate you guys, all you listeners and everything like that. It just means so much to us. And um, I come today to uh, let you know of some bittersweet news. Um, I come to tell you today that my precious soulmate, Brother Charles, he has graduated into New Jerusalem, which I am so, so happy for him. But anyway, um, I want you guys to know how much he loved you and he appreciated you. Uh, many of you guys have reached out for prayer and praise reports through the years and we really appreciate you because you know what, we're all family, okay? The body is not complete without every member, okay? But this happened Tuesday night, December the 19th of 2023. And at that very moment, I will tell you that there was not one ounce of me. When it happened, there was not one ounce of me that wasn't filled with joy. I have never experienced anything like that in my life. I had this supernatural joy and peace at that moment because I knew that he was in New Jerusalem. I knew that he was with Paul and Abraham and Noah, <laughs> exchanging all these awesome stories about the sons of God. I knew that. And it wasn't until a little while later that I, in my selfishness, I started crying. But I will tell you this, I had, there, there, there was nothing but genuine joy and peace. Um, I want to let you guys know that um, I know there's groups that have been affiliated with Charlie through the years. We are going to have a praise and worship and word celebration um, tentatively on May 6th of 2024. The venue and the time have not yet been established. This is going to be probably um, in the works for a little while because it's going to be outdoors. Because any of you guys knew that Charlie, you knew he was an outdoors guy. So, um, it's in December, not a good time to have it. So, anyway, but I plan to post a YouTube video later on, um, just to let you guys know that. So, click the subscribe button, share this with people, let other people subscribe, because that's when it's going to happen. So, but, God has given Zoe and I such peace in our home. And, this, it's just been amazing. And I, I know it's funny, but Charlie was a funny guy, and so... I, I don't know, I just kind of felt this way. I was like, man, did Charlie work out a deal with God to say, okay, I'm going to New Jerusalem, but I want perfect peace on my home. And you're going to take care of Zoe. You're going to take care of Leah. Because we have had, even though it's been sad, we have had such awesome presence of the Holy Spirit and peace in our home. I cannot even ex describe it. There has been people in my life that have went on into New Jerusalem before, but I've never experienced this kind of peace. So I just think he worked it out with God. <laughs> That's just me. Anyway, um, the day before the severe attack, God gave me a rhema word, and it was in Exodus 23, 20 through 22. And the Amplified, it reads like this. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you and guard you in the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. Give heed to him and listen to him and obey his voice. Be not rebellious before him or provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if you will indeed listen to his voice and that, excuse me, listen to and obey his voice and all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and I will be an adversary to your adversaries. Now, when I got that rhema, I was like so excited because Charlie and I, all this year, we knew that change was coming. We were talking about it. Huge change. Huge change. And we had been praying about it and talking about it. And I got really excited. I'm like, oh, he's got a place for us. He's got something different for us. He did. But that word was not for our family, so to speak. That word was for Zoe and I. And God reminded me of that throughout the next few weeks and days and all like that. I kept asking God, God, I need a word from you. You know, the Bible says that there's no more sure word of prophecy than the word itself. And whenever I can get a scripture from God, I know that it's the anchor to my soul, that I don't have to waver. 
I know that it's from God and I can bank on it. Anyway, two days after Charlie was promoted, the most awesome thing happened. I received a random phone call on the ministry line from a man that used to work at Charlie's dad's radio station back in Kentucky. Um, Charlie would talk to this man, but this man always called Charlie's personal phone, not the ministry line. Had he called Charlie's personal phone, I probably wouldn't have answered it. But he called the ministry line. And he, uh, you know, I, usually I'm like, okay, you know, it's, it's a call to the ministry line, so I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see if somebody's got a prayer request or a praise report or whatever, because that's usually the, what comes in. And um, he started asking about Brother Charles. He didn't know. He's in Kentucky. And so I told him, I said, you know, what had happened. And he went from this casual conversation to this, oh, no, you did it, devil authoritative tone and this man and Charles told me this man all I know about him is that he was a man of God Charlie told me over and over about him and I don't even know that he knew about Zoe you know we were just you know they, when he called they would always talk the word and when he, he would pray and he would prophesy and he would pray in the spirit and he prayed and he prophesied and he prayed in the spirit man I'm telling you what I felt the spirit of God all over me it was like he was analyzing the thoughts and the layers of my heart. It was like he was just reaching, it was God himself just reaching in through me. And I had to go find a pen and paper. I was like, I have to write this stuff down because I don't want to forget what God is speaking to me at this moment. And what the Lord said that I wrote down was so powerful and it encouraged me so much. I had told this man that I wanted to continue prevailing work. And that's really all he really knew. And when he started prophesying, he was prophesying, thus saith the Lord. I don't believe all prophecies that are spoke over me. Okay? This one, I knew it was God. I knew it. Because I'm not backing down to a giant right now. Amen. I'm not. He said, a lot will be required of you, but it will be okay. He's, and then he started talking about how God can use women and not to be intimidated. And he said, he said, I do not choose as men choose, but I look at the heart. He said, don't let the devil see you sweat. Walk on. And then he said, you have Charlie's mantle. It is all yours. It is all yours. And he said, if I need to, I will stop the sun for you. <laughs> he said, you take over and you go with it. And you go forth conquering. I couldn't even stand when <laughs> he was telling me that stuff. I just sat in the floor, consumed in the Holy Spirit, because I knew it was God. I'm not sharing this as a prideful thing. I wasn't coveting Charlie's mantle. I will tell you, I didn't even think about it, but in the few days before Charlie was promoted, weeks before Charlie was promoted, he would squeeze my hand and he would say, we are one, we are one, we are one. I'm like, I know we are, babe, I know we are. But whenever this word came from this man in Kentucky, and he told me, he goes, well, sometimes it just takes a stranger to give a message from God. <laughs> but whenever this message came, God revealed to me that when Charlie was saying, we are one, that mantle was being released. That mantle. And I didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. So anyway, I'm going to attach a link to this Prevailing Word Publishing website, in case you don't know about it, okay, for anyone that didn't. And there you're going to find many downloadable PDFs. Some of them are ones that I've done, some of them are ones that Charlie done, but I will have that um, link in the description below, okay, just for anybody that wants to, any, any of that information. Um, and on the Prevailing Word website, when you go to Word Resources, apart from the Work of the Holy Spirit in You book, 
everything is free um, with the option of making a donation. Uh, we are, our whole goal is to present the gospel without charge, but we have put donations um, on there just because people have asked about giving donations, okay? We are not 501c3, by the way, just so you know, okay? Uh, we will even mail hard copies to you if you want them. And I will say this, for seven years, God has inspired me to write a 366-page devotional, complete with beautiful pictures, and um, it was actually on the verge of being released when this tremendous attack occurred, okay? Um, Charlie couldn't wait for its release. He was so excited. He was so excited. Um, it is called Nuggets for the Remnant, and I will tell you that the digital is on the website in its final form. So um, we are in the process of creating hard copies to hand out as well. Um, just a second here. Um, here is a copy of the hard copies, okay? And I mean, they're huge. It's got all kinds of beautiful pictures on the inside. So um, if you like devotionals or whatever, Maybe you'll check it out. So anyway, just wanted to let you guys know that. Um, and I will tell you that this all being said with this announcement, um, I could not give an announcement like this without also giving a word of encouragement. It's just not in me. It's not in us. We can't do this without giving a word of encouragement from the Lord. And so I had prayed about this. And I hope that you'll go ahead and stay tuned for the rest of the message because it's the most powerful thing. In Psalm 107 and 20, it says he sent his word and what did it do? It healed them and delivered them from all destruction. So I'm going to give you some word, the living bread that came down out of heaven today. And I hope that it will encourage you not to be sad, but to take what you have and go on. Take what you have and go on, okay? And Philippians 1 19 through 25. I'm going to start there and I'm going to read out of the Amplified Bible for anybody that wants to follow along. It says, For I am well assured and indeed know that through your prayers and bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ the Messiah, this will turn out for my preservation, for the spiritual health and welfare of my own soul, and avail toward the saving work of the gospel. This is in keeping with my own eager desire and persistent expectation and hope that I shall not disgrace myself, nor be put to shame in anything, anything, but that with the utmost freedom of speech and unfailing courage, that's what he's given us in his word. Luke 21 and 15 says, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom that all of your gainsayers shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Okay? Now, as always, heretofore, Christ the Messiah will be magnified and get glory and praise in this body of mine and boldly and be boldly exalted in my person. Isn't that what happened with Charlie? The same spirit that was in Charlie is in you. Take what you have and go on. Whether through by life or through by death, for me to live is Christ. His life is in me. And to die is gain. The gain of the glory of eternity. If, however, it is to be life in the flesh and I'm here to live, that means fruitful service for me. I'm going to tell you, be fruitful. Be fruitful. So that I can say nothing as to my own personal preference. I cannot choose. But I am hard pressed between the two. And that's what happened to my love. He was hard pressed between the two. My yearning desire is to depart, to be free of this world, to be set forth, and to be with Christ. For that is far, far better. But to remain in my body as each of us here are today. Everybody in the sound of my voice is more needful and essential for your sake. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I shall remain and stay by you all. To do what? To promote your progress and joy in believing. Okay? So we're supposed to fan each other's flames. Okay? We're supposed to be walking in the Spirit each and every day. 
expect something good to happen. Expect God to use you. Expect the Holy Spirit to manifest. 2 Corinthians 13, 3 through 5. It says this, Since you desire and seek percept perceptible proof of the Christ who speaks in and through me. There's a Christ speaking in and through you when you're walking in the Word, okay? For he is not weak and feeble in dealing with you, but is mighty is a mighty power within you. He's a mighty power within you. You look in the mirror and you just see yourself. Oh, no, it's Christ in you, the whole of the Lord. you got a much better reflection than what you think. For he, for though he was crucified in weakness, yet he goes on living by the power of God. And though we too are weak in him as he was humanly weak, yet in dealing with you we shall show ourselves alive and strong in fellowship with him by the power of God. Examine and test yourselves and evaluate your own selves to see if you are holding to your faith. Are you holding to your faith? I did a teaching just here recently, and you know, it says, when he comes, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? That tells me he's going to be looking for it. That tells me he's going to be looking for it. Are you holding to your faith and showing the proper fruits of it? Test and prove yourselves, not Christ, okay? It's Christ inside of you, okay? Do you not realize and know thoroughly by an ever-increasing experience that Jesus Christ is in you? He's in you. He's just waiting to manifest. Okay? Let him out. The whole creation is groaning and travailing for the manifestation of the sons of God. God brought that scripture to my remembrance long ago, and he said, I will not disappoint them. I'm not going to disappoint them. He's not going to tell us that and then not show up. I want to tell you something. When God tells you to do something, he's going to show up. So you better do it. You don't want to fail him. Remember, we are one, just as the Father and the Son are. John 17, 11 in the Amplified says, And now, I am no more in the world, but these are still in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep in your name and the knowledge of yourself those whom you have given me, that we may become one as we are. They may become one as we are. One in spirit. And that's exactly what it is. John 17, 20 and 23, 20 to 23, it says that they all, may all be one. These are, by the way, these are prayers that Jesus prayed to God. How many of you guys believe that all of Jesus' prayers were successful? <laughs> Not one of them failed. So when he said, I'm praying that they're going to be one, even as we are one, you're believing equals you're receiving. I'm one. I'm one as the Father and the Son. That's my confession. That's my believing. Verse 21, 17, John 17, 21 says, That they all may be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us. Why? So that the world may believe and be convinced that you have sent me. I have given to them the glory and honor which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them. All of y'all. And you. He said, he looked at the body, you and me, in order that they may become one and perfectly united. No division, because we're the body. They may become one and perfectly united that the world may know and definitely recognize that you sent me and that you have loved them even as you have loved me. Praise God. That's a good promise, right? I'm excited about that. 2 Corinthians 2, or 4 and 7 says that we have this treasure in our earthen vessels that the excellency of the power is of God and not of us. It's not us. We were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in our bodies, right? 1 Corinthians 6 and 17 says this, But the person who's, who is united to the Lord becomes one in spirit with him. And I can't tell you how many times I look at Charlie and I would say, You know what? We're one. Because we are united in the Lord. We are united in the Lord. So not only were we one together, but we were one with the Lord. Praise God. Only conduct yourselves as to be citizens, excuse me, as citizens so to conduct yourselves that the manner of life 
will be worthy of the good news of the gospel, so that whether I do come and see you or I am absent, I may hear this of you, that you are standing, what, firm in united spirit and purpose, striving by, striving side by side and contending with a single mind for what? For, for the faith of the glad tidings of the gospel. And do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated by anything, in, by your opponents or adversaries. For such constancy and fearlessness will be a clear sign, proof and seal of them, of their impending destruction, but a sure token and evidence of your deliverance and salvation. So don't be intimidated by the enemy. I don't think I gave that reference. It's Philippians 1, 27 through 28. Okay? Don't be intimidated by the enemy. The only power that he has is the power of deception. Okay? Give no place to the devil. Okay? Jude 1 and 3 in the Amplified says this. Beloved, Jude says, and he's writing a letter, okay? And you can go back and read it. Verses 1 and 2, it talks about how it's actually to his ecclesia, the called out ones, okay? It's not just to anybody. It's to the remnant. And it says, Beloved, my whole concern was to write to you in regard to a common salvation. Charlie and I went to many churches, and every message was just about salvation. There is more than just John 3, 16 people. People need the meat. Mm -hmm. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. It's not just this salvation of asking Jesus to come into your heart, right? But, he said, but... Instead of this common salvation, he said, I found it necessary and was impelled to write to you and urgently appeal to you and exhort you to what? To contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Okay? The faith that is the sum of Christian belief, which was delivered verbally to the holy people of God. God doesn't move on complacency. But whenever you believe his word, that's when he moves. He moves. I don't care what the trial looks like. When you believe his word, he moves. 2 Corinthians 12, and I hope this is helping somebody today. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10, it says this. But he said to me, my grace, my favor, and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you. It's enough for you. Sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. Okay? For my strength, not ours, my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled and completed, and show themselves most effective when? In your weakness. It's in your weakness that his power is perfected, praise God. Oh, thank you, Father God. Therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weakness and infirmities. Why? That the strength and the power of Christ the Messiah may rest, yes, pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. Praise God. Pitch that tent. I want to get in that tent and I'm going to dwell in that tent. For the sake of Christ, I am well pleased and take pleasure in infirmities, insults, and hardships, and persecutions, and perplexities, and distresses. For when I am weak in human strength, that I am truly strong and able and powerful in divine strength. And that's the only strength that I want. His strength. Draw your strength from Him. Colossians 3 and 10 says this in the Amplified. And have clothed yourselves with the new spiritual self. Oh, I want my spiritual clothes. Let me be dressed with that. Which is ever in the process of being renewed and remolded into fuller and more perfect knowledge upon. Knowledge after the image and the likeness of him who created it. First John 2.20 says that you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. I don't care what the situation is. Maybe you don't understand it. But he said in Jeremiah 33 and 3, call to me. And I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Okay? You don't have to understand the situation. All you have to do is go to Abba Father and say, I believe. I believe your word. 
I'm not trusting in what I see. Faith is being so convinced of things that you cannot see that this circumstance that you're facing is of no consideration because you can see the end from the beginning. You can see the end from the beginning. Walking and living in Him. Colossians 1, 9 and 10 and the American Standard, it says this, For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be what? Filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Right? Praise God. In Romans 8, 6 it says, To be carnally minded is death. I want this spiritual wisdom, right? In the Amplified it says that a carnal mind is sense and reason apart from the Holy Spirit. So that you may walk, you're going to have this spiritual understanding, right? Why? So that you may, you, so that you will walk in a man, manner worthy of the Lord to please Him in all respects. It doesn't matter what you're facing. We all want to hear, well done, that good and faithful servant. Are we striving to fulfill His purpose and call right here? Colossians 3 and 23, I've adapted a prayer of that. It says, whatever you have for me to do today, Lord, let me do it heartily unto you and not as unto men. I'm not called to please man. Not even somebody that I really love. I am called first to please God. So that I may be bearing fruit in every good work and what? Increasing in the knowledge of God. I want to be a fruit bearer today. My fruit shall remain, right? Praise God. All right, Philippians 2, uh, verses 2 through 5 in the um, American Standard. It says, Make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose, one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind. What are you to do? Regard one another as more important than yourselves. I don't know anybody on this planet in all my life that exercised that more than Brother Charles. And I will tell you the evidence of everybody coming to my house and telling me that. <laughs> I knew that as his wife. He was always preferring other people more than himself. Even at our dinner table, if somebody called, he would get up from the dinner table and go and pray with them. That's just the man he was. Even if we took a um, a little family outing, if somebody called, he would always answer the phone and pray with them and be with them. It didn't matter. And I didn't care about that because I knew that he needed to be about the Father's business. All right. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which is also in Christ Jesus. That whole mindset. WWJD, right? Every circumstance, every situation. Philippians 2, verse 12 through 16, in the American Standard, it says this, So then, my beloved, just as you have obeyed, not as just in my presence only, but now, much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why? For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to do His good pleasure. Many people stop reading there. But the next verse says, do all things without murmuring and complaining. Why? Because he's working in you. He's got to work you out of you before he can work himself in. Because there's not enough room for flesh. He wants you to be all consumed by him. All of him, none of you. That's why John 3 and 30 says, he must increase and I must decrease every day. If you will not decrease, he cannot increase, right? Yeah. Praise God. Ugh. Excuse me. So that you may prove yourselves, verse 15, to be blameless and innocent children of God, above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you appear as lights in the world. The more of, you, uh, the more, the more of God that you have in your life, the brighter you're going to shine. That whole song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Charlie used to say, this flood light of mine, <laughs> I'm going to let it shine. It shouldn't be a little light. The more of you, that, or the more of God that you have in you, it's going to be a flood light. Holding fast to the word of life so that in the day of Christ, I will have reason to glory. 
Because I did not run in vain, nor toil in vain. Because you're walking by the Spirit. Everything that He had, He gave to you. Okay? All things belong to you. In Ephesians 1 and 22 through 23, it says, And He has put all things where? Under His feet. And has appointed Him the universal and supreme head of the church. A headship exercised through the church, which is His body. The fullness of Him who fills all in all. He will fill you to the full if you let him. Do not quench the spirit. For in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete. Everything complete. And who fills everything everywhere with himself. Praise God. Thank you, Father God. Bear with me. I really hope this is helping somebody today. John 1, 16, it says, For out of his fullness, abundance, we have all received and all had a share in, and we're all supplied with one grace after another, and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, and even favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. You know what? If you start confessing things like that every day, you're going to see things change in your life. Because he said over in Jeremiah 1 and 12, I'm going to watch over my word to what? To perform it. So whenever you're saying, oh, thank you, Father, I get spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, a gift heaped up on gift, he's got to perform it, right? And the more that you say that, you're going to believe it. <laughs> John 16, 13, it says this, But when he, the spirit of truth, the truth-grieving spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth, the whole, the full truth. For he will not speak on his own message, on his own authority, but whatever he will tell Whatever he, he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. And he will give the message that has been given to him. And he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come. Don't we want to know that? Don't we want to know that? That will happen in the future. He will honor and glorify me because he will take of, receive and draw upon what is mine. And will reveal, dis declare and disclose it and transmit it to you. And get this, if you don't get anything else out of this verse, you get this. Everything that the Father has is mine. That's what Jesus said. Everything that the Father has is mine. This is what I meant when I said that He, the Spirit, will take the things that are mine, what? Everything that God had, right? And will reveal, declare, disclose, and transmit them to you. That takes us right back to John 17 when Jesus prayed, Oh, Father, let them be one, even as you and I are one. We have everything. Romans 8 and 32, it says, For he did not, excuse me, he who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also with himself freely and graciously give us all other things? Come on, he laid down his son for us. He's not a selfish God here. He wants you to have everything. John 14 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance that I said to you. That's red letter. That's Jesus talking to you. What he's talking about. The things that he said to you, that's the word of God. But he can't bring it to your remembrance if it's not in your rememberer, right? It's got to get down in you. And then it works with the Spirit, and the Spirit brings it back up. And whenever you have a divine appointment with somebody, it's just going to flow. It's just going to flow. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 1, verses 5 through 8 in the Amplified says this, So that in Him, in every respect, you were enriched in full power and what? Readiness of speech. For every situation. Okay? To speak of what? Your faith and complete knowledge and illumination to give you full insight into its meaning. In this way, our witnessing concerning Christ the Messiah was so confirmed and established and made sure in you that you are not consciously falling behind or lacking in any spiritual endowment. You're not lacking in anything. Or Christian grace, the reception of what is due to the power of divine grace operating in your souls by the Holy Spirit. While you wait and watch constantly, living in hope, 
for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and his being made visible to all. Jesus is still appearing to people, right? And he will establish you to the end, keep you steadfast and give you strength and guarantee your vindiction. He will be your warrant against all accusation or indictment so that you will be guiltless and irreproachable in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. That's a good promise. He's going to vindicate you. 2 Peter 1, verses 3, it says, For his divine power has bestowed upon us all things. Remember we are talking about you having all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness. Through the full personal knowledge of him who called us by and to his own glory and excellence and virtue. By means of these, he has bestowed upon us his precious and exceeding great promises, so that through them you may escape by flight the moral decay, rottenness and corruption that is in the world because of covetous lust and greed, and become sharers and partakers of this divine nature. He wants you to walk in this divine nature every day. And there's no reason that you can't. The only reason that you might not be able to is because you're believing a lie that the enemy has put in your spirit. Okay? you got to root out those lies with the Word of God. Luke 8, 11 says the Word is the seed. Plant some seeds of faith in you and let them grow. It says Romans 10, 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, right? Praise God. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has what? He's blessed you with every spiritual blessing in this heavenly realm. You have all things. Do you believe it? 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6 says this. Yet when we are among the full grown, spiritually mature, who are ripe in understanding, what do we do? We impart a higher wisdom, the knowledge of the divine plan previously hidden. But it is indeed not a wisdom of this present age, or of this world, nor of the leaders of this and rulers of this age, who are being brought to nothing and doomed to pass away. But rather what we are setting forth is a wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. Once hidden from human understanding, and now revealed to us by God. That wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages for our glorification. Yes. To what? Lift us up in the glory of his presence. Woo! That is some good stuff. None of the rulers of this age or world would have perceived and recognized and understood this. For if they had, they never would have crucified the Lord of glory. But on the contrary, as the scripture says, what I has seen, what I has not seen, and ear has not heard, and has not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared made and keeps ready for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, promptly obeying him and gratefully recognizing the benefits he has bestowed. Yet to us, God has revealed and unveiled and revealed them by and through his spirit. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit today, I urge you, dig into the word. Acts 1 and 8 says it's you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. By and through his spirit, for the Holy Spirit searches diligently, exploring and examining everything, even sounding the profane, profound and bottomless things of God, the divine counsels and things hidden, and beyond man's scrutiny. For what person perceives, knows, and understands what passes through a man's heart except the man's own spirit within him? So, just so no one discerns, comes to know and comprehend the thoughts of God, except the Spirit of God. Now, we have not received the Spirit that belongs to the world, but the Holy Spirit, who is from God, given to us. Given to us. And why was it given to us? Because they crucified the Lord of glory. They didn't know what they were doing. The Holy Spirit was not available until they crucified the Lord of glory. Now we have everything we need. We had the Word before. Now we have the Spirit working with the Word. Now we are more than able. We are that Joshua Caleb generation. We are more than able. Okay, back to where I am. 
but the Holy Spirit who is from God given to us that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of divine favor and blessings so freely and lavishly bestowed upon us by God. Praise God. It's Christ in you, the Holy glory. Okay? Our responsibility is to respond to the ability that is within us. There is a great ability within us, and we need to respond to that. Galatians 1.15 um, in the American Standard says, But when God, this is Paul talking, okay? He said, But when God, who had set me apart, even from my mother's womb, and called me through his grace, was pleased to what? To reveal his son in me. Can you imagine that? This man was murdering Christians. And God had set him apart and called him even before he was doing that. And he was going to reveal his son in him. I just totally blows my mind, the grace of God. Praise God. He said, to reveal his son in me, so that I may preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood. Paul didn't consult with his own flesh and blood. And that's really what gets us into problems. It's because God tells us to do something, and we're like, eh, is this really God? You know what I'm saying? He said, my sheep hear my voice. Okay? First John 4, 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Yeah. So try that. You know? Try it. Pray. But don't discard it. Don't discard Too many of you are discarding what God is telling you to do without even trying it. Try it. Try it. He said, I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood, his own flesh and blood, and also the others, too. He said, I didn't even go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But what did he do? He went to Arabia and, once retur and returned once more to Damascus. Then three years later, he went up to Jerusalem to become with, acquainted with Cephas and stayed with him for 15 days. So what does that tell me? Jesus appeared to him, right? He didn't consult with his own flesh and blood, but he went away three years by himself. Why? So he could know the voice of God. So he could know the voice of God. That I may know him. That I may know him. John 17 and 3 says, This is eternal life, that you may know the Father and the Son. Praise God. We can have eternal life now. Romans 13 and 14, the American Standard, it says, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in its lust. And I really believe that that's what Paul was doing. He's, he was becoming that new man. He had an appearance of Jesus Christ, and he was so hungry, and he disciplined himself, and he went away, and he put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he wrote all the church epistles for us, praise God, through the Holy Spirit. He was a new man, right? Galatians 5 and 16, it says, but if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Come on, you're not going to do it if you're walking in the Spirit. Simple as that. Now, Philippians 4.13 has really, really been a real raiment to me after Charles graduated into glory. And it says this, and I love it in the Amplified Bible, and I really hope that you'll take this home for yourself too, for whatever God has called you to do. Whether it's big, whether it's small, it doesn't matter. It says, for I have strength for all things in Christ, who empowers me. And I am ready for anything and equal to anything through Him, not in yourself, through Him, who infuses inner strength to me. And I am self sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. That's all you need. That's all you need. The Word and the Spirit. I'm going to end this with this right here. You can do something in this world that no one else can. In Christ, you're the game changer. You're the game changer. By faith and His power working in you, you can expect to conquer kingdoms. You can expect to obtain the promises that you have not yet seen. You can expect to shut the mouths of ravenous lions. You can expect to quench the power of what seems to be overwhelming fires. You can expect to escape the edges of evil swords. You can expect to be strong in weakness. You can expect to be mighty in war. You can expect to put foreign armies to flight. And you can expect, yes, you can even 
expect to receive your dead ones back to life by resurrection. This is glory. That all comes from Hebrews 11, 33 through 35. Your believing will equal your receiving. So obey God. What have you got to lose? Obey God. And I will tell you, everybody that Charlie met, he thought the word of them. Not the world of them. He thought the word of them. And oftentimes, people would ask Charlie, how you doing? And he'd say, oh, I'm happier than a muddy pig. Many of you guys have heard Charlie say, I'm happier than a muddy pig. Or happy as a muddy pig. That's not comparable to how happy he is now. He is so happy. To all you guys that knew him, just know that he is the, the best that you can imagine this new Jerusalem that's coming down out of heaven. And I know people say, oh, he's with the Lord, he's with the Lord. But if you have any questions on that, let me know. I'm going to put our email address below, and I'll give you all the information about New Jerusalem. Because Charlie's in New Jerusalem right now with many of the saints, the great cloud of witnesses that have gone on before. And we're going to be caught up and changed, and they're coming down out of heaven, and it's going to be a glorious marriage in him. And it won't be long. And it won't be long, because Jesus is coming soon. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for these great and exceeding precious promises. I thank you that you're working, working in us both to will and to do your good pleasure. And Father God, I just ask in the mighty name of Jesus, if there's anyone under the sound of our voice that has not received Jesus as Lord of their life, that has not asked the Lord to come and master them from the inside out, that you would begin to pray and that you would begin to let go of everything that is in you, and that you would come to know your one and true Savior, even right now, and that you would yearn and have a zeal for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that you would want to, to be this game changer in Jesus' mighty name. And I just thank you, Father God. I thank you that this whole creation is even growing for, and for the manifestation of the sons of God, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, empower us, infuse us by your Holy Spirit, Father God, that we will do everything that you've called us to be in Jesus' mighty name. If this has blessed you today, we ask you to hit the like button, subscribe, share this with somebody, but just be encouraged and just obey God. Praise God. Amen.